with the mountain being in your mind for quite a long time, several months, what were your first thoughts when you first saw it? Magnificent mountain. Um, when you first come over a cinema and pass and, and the mountain is standing there, it's just, uh, the beauty of the mountain is just spectacular. Um, it's really magnetic. Um, your eye keeps turning to the mountain. Um, your camera keeps turning to the mountain. It's just an overpowering spirituality about the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you really feel when you come over a cinema and pass that you've entered a sanctuary where the wild spirits um, haunt the mountain. Yeah. It yeah. really is a spiritual place. Yeah. yeah. Around Lake Magog, Mm -hmm. There are all these green meadows, and they're just like a green carpet that, that are laid at its feet for people to come and kneel and pay homage yeah. to the mountain. That's what it feels like. Yes. It's just so over, overpowering that is a mountain, so magnetic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it just radiates this incredible spirituality. Mm -hmm. it, must have been, it must have been a sacred mountain to the Stoneys. Yeah. I just can't imagine it couldn't be. Mm -hmm. So, a Cinnaboy, if that's the correct pronunciation, how did they get that name? Uh, the name of the mountain dates back to 1885, um, which was when it was first seen by um, a surveying scientist by the name of George Dawson, who was from Nova Scotia. Um, he saw a Cinnabon for the first time from the summit of Copper Mountain, which is 25 miles further north. Mm -hmm. um, and when he was there, um, he observed its resemblance to the teepees of an Indian tribe. He knew it was the Cinnaboins. Yeah. Oh, right. Now the term Assiniboine itself um, is derived from an old Ojibwe word, um, Assiniboine, mm -hmm. which means stone soup. The tribe got that name mm -hmm. because of a method they used for cooking, uh, where they would place heated stones into raw high containers of water and from that they would make a broth. Mm -hmm. um, later on, uh, the early white explorers uh, called them the Stonies. The Stonies must have visited the lush green meadows around Lake Magog to hunt and to seek their vision quests long before the first white man set foot on this vast continent. In their vision quests they came to seek guidance and inspiration from the wild spirits. So it is clear that in our own journey to Mount Assiniboine we were walking in the footsteps of the Stonies who had been countless times over many centuries before the first white explorers arrived. In doing so, we too would engage with the wild spirits which inhabit the sanctuary of the Stony Mountain. The Stonies lost their traditional hunting and spiritual lands when the white man came, and today they are still fighting for their right to return. Our journey to the distant mountain took place in the shadow of their journey to have truth recognised, to recover their freedom, and to seek the justice denied them for so long. Like their journey still is, our journey was long and exerting, and was only achieved by working and sharing together as a band of brothers. However, unlike the Stonies, we achieved our objective and reached the mountain. So now we tell our story in the hope that they too will reach their sacred mountain soon. In the beginning, there was nothing, until a voice from the wilderness summoned forth the Genesis. Come to me and pay homage to the spirit of the wilderness.
Come, 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 come